Hey folks, I've got my telly, I've got my funk shirt on, I've even got my purple shorts on. So you know what that means, time for some prints. This week I'm going to break down Illusion, Coma, Pimp and Circumstance. This lesser known album track of Prince's 2004 release Musicology is a masterclass in funk guitar arrangement. It's both a great illustration of Prince's endlessly clever use of harmony. And also a fun example of his classic, tight, dry, funk guitar playing. Probably DI'd straight into the desk. This song is quite simple, it's in 4-4 and it's got a four measure chord cycle that goes A minor, F, D minor and then the fourth bar contains C and E7, two beats each. The groove features a 16th note shuffle, so it's about 100 BPM, one, two, three, four, but instead of going one and two and three and four, like that's an eighth note shuffle, we've got one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and So let's dig in. The song opens with this tonically ambiguous staccato figure. Probably played on a synth, perhaps using a sample of a bass guitar. It has that sort of um, stable, thick string tonality to it and no twang. I call this line ambiguous because alone it tells us nothing about the song's actual harmony. We've got three notes that are right next to each other, the E flat, the E and the F. Now, there's no standard scale that contains three consecutive semitone notes like that. It's really, it's almost more like a percussive part, it's very staccato. Now, in fact, it really clashes with Prince's vocal melody that he's singing over it during the intro. So let's add the, the sparse bass line. So the bass line is just roots and fifths, again played on a synth, but I'm gonna play it on this old Greco Beatle bass because that's more fun. So now that we have a bass line, that atonal funk figure from the intro adds some wonderful Prince-like colour to an otherwise innocuous diatonic chord progression. I mean, let's imagine this thing in Ed Sheeran's hands. Versus Prince. So let's check out some of these wicked harmonised funk licks. Prince played this during the third verse. So while one guitar plays a C chord, which is basically an A minor seven without its root note, and that lick, the other guitar plays, so an A and an E note, and the same lick but moved up a string. So together we've got like a, very cool. And then guitar one plays this staccato descending line from the blue scale. And I'm plucking those with my second finger because it's got a, a real plucked sound the way Prince played it. And the other guitar is playing the same thing up an octave. So you can play those together as well. Now let's examine what he played during the chorus. This first lick becomes an important part of the song and adds another chordal colour that was not previously present. So let me break this down. The first part of the song features only the bass line and Prince singing the A minor melody. So our tonality is purely A natural minor at this point. In the second verse, that staccato riff enters. 
which brings in that blues note, the um, D sharp or E flat, but accentuates the F note. So now we reach the chorus and those funk guitars bring in an F sharp note. <laughs> So the F sharp adds a Dorian flavor to that same chord. Now we have these four chromatic notes. D sharp, E, F natural and F sharp, all occurring over that same A minor chord. The guitar on the left is just playing like a descending Dorian line. But with Prince's technique, his way of playing, it comes out with a lot of chord tones in it. Like So it's almost like strumming while we play that line. The guitar on the right is just playing. So it's like a G, C, E, A minor seven or C major. And then adding the F sharp there on the 14th fret. Now riff two in the choruses is just four notes, but it features one note that is so staccato, it's all, you could almost argue that it's not even there. There's a couple of times where it sounds like it's just a muted string. And that's doubled an octave lower. Riff three is the same one from that verse before. One, two, three. With the harmony below it, played in fourths or double stops. The next riff in the chorus is a little chordal pattern over the A minor, which is really just eighth and ninth out of a, like an A minor seven chord. Then a muted downbeat, followed immediately by the eighth fret on the two bottom strings, which is a, a G and a C note. And that's over the F chord, so it becomes like an F add nine. The harmony guitar for that plays, so five and five, these are all on the G and B strings, five and five, seven and six, 10 and 10, 9 and 8. To round out that chorus, the guitar on the left plays like a C5 chord and an E5 chord. But the guitar on the right actually adds a triplet into that, so it plays. It's got two muted strings in there, so it starts on the open E, then the muted A and D strings, then a quick D note. Ooh. So that's over the C chord. So we end up with those two notes together. And then over the E chord, he played an E5, but in four notes. So open, seven, nine, nine. So this sort of thing where Prince can play perfectly tight, but chooses to play slightly different things with slightly different rhythms adds a crucial human touch that allows Prince's sometimes heavily sequenced music to retain its hardcore funk feel. Okay, so let's break down this superb outro jam. Prince has harmonized guitars improvise over six passes of the song's original four bar chord progression. Prince simply ran the tape and improvised some funk licks before running the tape again and using his ear to harmonise those licks or answer those licks. So here's the first pass. That first lick is a nice simple A minor pentatonic run. One guitar is going while the other is going could be played there. And then we're into that that great Dorian lick. Side note, 
Prince loved the surprise Dorian tonality. He used it on Kiss. He used it on Thieves in the Temple. In fact, that note, which is the major sixth in the parent scale, appears throughout Prince's repertoire. He accentuates it in Cream, The Morning Papers, Raspberry Beret. Now Prince repeats that third lick from the chorus, but moves it ahead by one beat. So instead of being on beat four, one, two, three, he now plays it on beat three. One, two. And again, it's this sort of thing that illustrates his incredible ear for arranging. These minute changes create interest while keeping the song moving. The next outro lick has the two guitars playing like a call and response. So the first guitar plays with a couple of pull-offs. The second guitar answers, hammering on that string change. This, the first guitar plays another phrase. Second guitar answers. Same sort of thing, a little hammer and pull, and then a hammer onto the next string. Uh, back to the first guitar. All the way down the pentatonic scale. But over the top of that, the second guitar does another one of its little triplet phrases. So we've got guitar one playing this. Three, four, one. And guitar two playing three, four, one. Okay, second pass. So second pass starts the same as the first with our Dorian lick, followed by our staccato lick. This time over the D minor, Prince does a little repetitive lick. So on the first guitar we hear one, two, three. And on the second guitar, same sort of thing up on the next pair of strings. One, two, three. As the song returns to the A minor chord here, both guitars play quite different licks. The first guitar plays one. That's accentuating that Dorian F sharp note again, but in a lower octave. Guitar number two plays. So that's one of Prince's favorite shapes. He uses that in Kiss. Yeah, it's like a little A minor six. Also, the Dorian note in there. Over the F chord this time, Prince reprises that staccato lick that he's already moved by a beat, but now he moves it back onto beat two. So originally the lick was one, two, three, four, one. Then he moved it to one, two, three. Now it's one, two. And he adds another note to the end of it. And that first C note is really just a muted, it's hardly, not really a note at all now. Three, four, one. Same thing, doubled an octave higher. As we reach the D minor chord this time, both guitars are again on their own paths, playing completely separate things. So guitar one plays one, two, one. So that's a tricky little run, it's very cool. It does not fit the chord underneath it at all. <laughs> the first part does, the first part sounds sweet over the D minor. That's really nice with the ninth in there. But then the next part, it's a C chord, but Prince plays so it starts on the B, one note shy of the chord, C, then C sharp. So those, there's two clashy notes out of three there. So he's, he hammers those notes on, plays the open D string, hammers onto the E, plays the open G string, hammers onto the F, then plays the B and G strings together, and then hammers onto F sharp, 
and A together there. It starts on B2. I'm going to play this one through a couple of times because it is a tricky one, but it's very cool. One, two. Slower. One, two. And up to speed. One. Great little run. But yeah, I just don't know what he was thinking. It's, it's just A7, it's like an A7 run, but the chords underneath that are a C and an E7. So that's funk, that's Princess Funk. So throughout all this, Guitar 2 plays this repetitive lick that's like... So I'm starting there on the seventh and eighth on the G and B strings. The ghost note sliding straight into the eighth on the G string, back to the seventh, fifth and our root note, the A note, the seventh fret on the D string. That starts on beat three. It's like one, two, three. So he almost plays the same lick three times, but the last time it's. So all together, one, two. Then we're back to the A minor for our next pass. We start the same again with our Dorian lick, guitar one, guitar two, and then we do our staccato lick that's been moved back to beat two, and there's one slight difference in this one in the phrasing. And that muted C note that's, that's pretty much not there is played a 16th note ahead of where it has been every other time. But it's done on both guitars and it sounds fantastic. Now we've got a couple of sparse licks where both guitars are playing the same sort of pattern, but an octave or so apart. So guitar one. Three little descending licks. The first one, I'm bending the 20th fret, bend, release, pull off to the 17th. Then the second lick, 17 pull off to 15, 17 on the B string. And the next one, bending the 15th fret on the B string and pulling that 13th fret down a slight bit like a quarter bend. That part in time, one, it comes in on beat three. One, two. The second guitar plays really the same lick twice but the first time he ends up on the A note the second time he stops on the on the C note one two we're back to the A minor for one of my favorite parts this part sees both guitars doing interesting A blues licks. Guitar one, very princess-esque lick. Uh, sounds like something from Alphabet Street. But guitar two goes. So on that, he's playing from the six, so the flat five note, the sixth fret on the A string to the seventh to the A note, which is seventh fret on the D string, back to the sixth fret on the A string to accentuate that flat five. Then he pulls off, and actually while he does that, you can hear that his finger's still on that A note there too. You can hear both those notes ringing together. Then uh, we've got the fifth fret, the D note, fifth fret of the A string. Pull off to open A, then he plays like a C5 shape, which is basically A minor seven. So third fret on the A string, fifth fret on the D string. Pulls off again to the open A, plays the A there as well and slides away from it. So really slowly, three, four. Those two parts sit together really interestingly. I love how they sound together. Now this time, as the song moves to the F chord, Prince repeats the Dorian lick. But starting on beat two, 
So it's in the wrong bar, it's in the second bar of the progression, and it's on the wrong beat. It's on beat, uh, beat two instead of beat one. Every other time in the song, it's been on beat one. One, two. This time it's one, two. So, uh, and, and the other thing that's <laughs> wrong with it is that it features the, the Dorian note in A minor, the F sharp, over the F chord. So, yeah, look, it's more about feel than, uh, than theory, this stuff. One, two. So what he's doing there is the A minor seven, well, let's call it a F major nine this time. Then with a flat nine. Slides it up two frets. So it's like a D chord over an F, which now makes it an F13 flat nine. Then barring the tenth fret on the on the bottom four strings, which gives us a D minor seven because the chord has now changed to D minor. Whilst guitar two plays one. One, two, three. So sliding, uh, barring the, the third fret on the lower three strings and sliding immediately back to the fifth fret and then playing this shape. So we've got an F note, third fret on the D string, muted G string, first fret on the B string, third fret on the E string. So it's like that shape, an F add nine, although it's over the D minor, so it's a D minor 11. So that whole passage again, one, two, three, four, one, two. Over the E7 chord this time, Prince plays this lick, but we really can't hear the A note this time. And it's in two octaves. Back to our original lick. This time over the F chord, Prince added a ninth to the chord by playing. So that comes in on the end of beat two. One and two. So it's just those two notes on the fifth fret on the D and G strings sliding in from the fourth. And the second guitar follows that but playing. So it's very cool, it's like. The next lick is that same one with the missing A note. And then we're up to the final run of the song, staccato descending notes in octaves. Three, four, one, two, three, four. You can just hear a, a G note on the end of that one. The other guitar is playing it down here. All right, there's a lot to have fun with in that one. I'm gonna leave you with it. Thanks guys, thank you so much to my patrons who have joined on Patreon. So half of you are there asking for Prince stuff, so this is for you guys, and the other half are there asking for Tom Waits, so stay tuned and, uh, and we'll have some more Tom Waits very, very shortly, hopefully next week. Thank you. Oh, and on my Patreon, we've got lots of lessons, lots of tabs for everything that I put up here, and uh, warm-up exercises and you know, it's just a great way to give me a little bit of support, which frees me up to do more of this stuff instead of having to go and earn money without a guitar in my hands. Thank you.